I want to talk to you tonight about Christmas joy. Christmas joy. Luke 1, 39. Our outline is as follows. If you're taking notes, number one, the joy of Elizabeth. The joy of, of Elizabeth. Number two, the joy of an unborn baby. Kind of an unusual thing. The joy of an unborn baby. But folks, it's in Scripture. And number three, the joy of Mary. The joy of Mary. You know, I realize that we have been going through a pandemic these last nine months. I also know it has been an extremely challenging time for everyone because of all of the unrest, the division, the isolation, sickness, and even death. And uh, one word that I've heard used more than once is chaos. Uh, we've been dealing with this for a long time. But if there's ever a better time to celebrate a Christian holiday, it has to be Christmas. And I know some of you would say, well, what about Easter? Well, folks, we couldn't have Easter if we didn't have Jesus' birth. All right? I, yes, Easter is, those two are my favorite holidays, I, obviously. Uh, but, uh, you know, Christmas is about the birth of Jesus Christ. Um, most people acknowledge the Christmas season. Uh, I've even noticed more Christmas lights being put up in neighborhoods. Uh, everyone needs light and hope in these dark times. My prayer is that we all will show the love of Christ and the reason we have true joy in our lives uh, these next three weeks and even into 2021. True joy is this, folks, and you've heard me say it many times. Joy, first is Jesus. To have true joy, you have to put Jesus first. Second is uh, others, J-O, why is yourself? Uh, let's study this overlooked Christmas uh, story from Luke chapter 1. Luke 1, 39, the joy of Elizabeth. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah. And we know that Mary and Elizabeth were cousins. And, uh, you know, she left her place, the hill country, uh, kind of, you know, again, it's self-described there. It wasn't a metropolis. It's a small town uh, in Judah. And entered the house of Zacharias. And we know that that was Elizabeth's husband, and he was a priest. And uh, I will be speaking on that subject uh, next week. All right? And greeted Elizabeth. And the reason she was there, because she knew Elizabeth was pregnant, okay? And, uh, you know, when you look at this scripture, I see two miracles in the scripture. Uh, number one, Elizabeth was barren. Uh, she wanted uh, badly to uh, have a child, and God answered that prayer. And the second one is Mary, all right? And she, we know, folks, she was a virgin <clears throat> in you know, if you ask anybody in the scientific world, they would just say, it is impossible. A virgin cannot have a child. But we know the miraculous birth, and I will be talking about that this Sunday. We are in the Christmas season, if you haven't noticed, for the next uh, three weeks I'll be preaching all about Christmas. And it says, and it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And folks, I am telling you, uh, you know, I want to say this right off the bat. Being blessed by God, all right, brings joy into our life. And I'm going to be talking about that. But these two ladies, uh, you know, uh, one is Mary was carrying the Christ child. Okay, and I'm going to speak about that uh, here in just a second also. But also Elizabeth, uh, the miracle there. And so they both were blessed of God. And you will see the word blessed in here several times. Now notice what happened. Just the greeting, heard the greeting of Mary and the baby leaped. Folks, I want to tell you right now, life begins at conception. It begins at conception. 
And uh, it's, it's so important that we understand that. But not only the baby leaped in her womb, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. You know what I, I've come to learn in my Christian life? Christians that are filled with the Holy Spirit have joy in their lives. Don't you like to be around new Christians? Okay, people that just got saved, they're fired up, they're excited. Uh, everything seems to go, be going well. And, and, you know, they have that joy of that new birth and uh, knowing, you know, that they are Christians and that God has uh, really changed their life. So I think the joy of, of Elizabeth was because of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Ephesians 5, go with me to Ephesians 5. I want to show you this. Ephesians 5, verse 18. Ephesians 5, 18. And do not be drunk with wine, which is dispensation, but be filled with the Spirit. Folks, the key to joy is being filled with the Spirit. I heard a man in our first revival, the first one we had here, uh, when I came here in 2004, Cliff Palmer said this, you cannot offend a spirit-filled Christian. You know, that was a statement I had to chew on for a while, all right? Because every one of us probably have been offended by something or somebody in our lives, okay? And, you know, it's, it's that word, I tell you, that three-letter word, but you don't know and uh, I had lunch with Cliff one day, and he simply said, Brother Mike, the older I get, the more I realized, you know, I, I shouldn't be offended. People are people. You're not going to change people. Situations are situations. You cannot change some situations. So part of, you know, being a Christian is being filled with the Spirit. And you have to understand, folks, you don't just wake up filled with the Spirit. Okay, you have to do things for that feeling to take place. All right, one is you have to be close to God. Okay, you have to be close to God. You, you have to be, have that spiritual awareness of him. Number two, you have to pray. You need to be a man and a woman of prayer to be filled with the Spirit. And the three, and, and there's more than that. Uh, you know, uh, there's other things I'm going to read here just in just a second. But the third thing is, you need to be filled with Scripture. Okay? Scripture. Why? Because Scripture ministers to us. And when sometimes I, I, I want to be down or sometimes when, you know, maybe somebody said something to me and, you know, I thought, I'm not sure what they meant by that. If I start quoting Scripture, okay, I'm just telling you, you know, those, those feelings just go away. And so, if we're going to have true joy in our life, folks, we must be filled with the Spirit. And I don't know any better time. I mean, we should be filled with the Spirit year-round. But there's just something about Christmas where people are more aware of what's going on and the holidays, you know, and all that. And, and we need to be filled with the Spirit. But look at verse 19. Speaking uh, to one another in Psalms. Okay, Psalms is a good comfort uh, you know, the Psalms uh, are great, you know, books. And hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody into your heart to the Lord. I remember one time I was, you know, going through the hospital, and this has been several years ago, and I was, you know, just kind of humming, or I might have even been whistling. Sometimes I whistle a tune. And a lady looked at me in the hallway and says, what are you so happy about? You know, and I just stopped and said, well, number one, I'm visiting somebody in the hospital and I'm not in the hospital. Okay, number two, I am healthy. Number three, you know, I, I got here, I was able, and I just went down a list of things. And she says, well, all I'm saying is I don't see many people doing that anymore. I said, well, I, that's what I'm going to do. All right. Listen, folks, you know, we, you know, the way we react to people is so important. Okay, we can de-arm people if we, if we just stay in the Spirit, if we just, you know, are sincere in what we do in our hearts and sing unto the Lord. Verse 20, giving thanks always for all things to God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, anybody can serve God in the good times. 
You know, it's really not even a challenge. But in challenging times, I know it's been nine months. I want things to change, folks. I want to take the mask off. Like right now, I'm taking them off, and you, you have to have them on. I understand that. But I'm simply saying it's not going to change when we want things to change. We cannot let circumstance determine. And notice I haven't said happiness, all right? Because happiness is fleeting. You can be happy one minute and unhappy the next minute. But true Christianity and true love brings joy into our heart. And folks, you think about the love of God. You think about the vastness and the depth of His love. And you think about how He personally chose you. Salvation. I mean, we have so much to be thankful for. Then go to Acts chapter 4. Acts 4, just one verse here I want you to see. Acts chapter 4. And again, Peter was addressing the Sanhedrin. You know, they were chiding him because, you know, through God, he healed a man. And he says in verse 13, And when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. And they realized they had been with Jesus. You know how to have joy in your life? Spend some time. With Jesus you say well wait a minute he's up in heaven he's on the right side now folks he's right here with us God the Father looking down over us God the Son Jesus walking beside us I even like the innocence of a little child you know when you counsel them and they're young six seven years old and you ask them do you want to invite Jesus into your heart I remember one kid says I didn't know he would fit in there. Just the innocence of that, and I had to explain what I meant to that. And then you've got the Holy Spirit inside of us. Listen, folks, I don't care how bad it gets. We've got God, we've got Jesus, and we've got the Holy Spirit. That should produce joy in our lives. And Elizabeth, knowing Mary, Elizabeth rejoicing with Mary, uh, Elizabeth and Mary had not seen each other in a while. They had the joy of the Lord in their hearts. So we see the joy of Elizabeth. The second thing I want you to see is the joy of an un unborn baby. Look what verse 42 says. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Again, folks, you have to understand Every word in God's holy word is important. She could have said with a voice, but she said with a loud voice. One of my favorite songs in praise courses, Shout to the Lord. I love that song. When that song starts playing, it does something to my spirit. Okay, it does something to my heart. And man, I, I want to do what the, the song says. I want to just stand up and shout to God, thanking him for who he is and what he has done for us. Then she spoke with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. What is she saying? I just can't believe you are carrying the Christ child. I just can't believe your cousin. I mean, you know, I don't even know what to compare it to, but something uh, exciting happening. You know, something that is unusual happened. Okay, and, and we'll be talking about the Christmas story, and we'll be talking about, you know, can you imagine what Joseph felt? I mean, he's thinking, man, something's not right here. Okay, but Elizabeth sensed that, and and, and Mary was chosen to do that, and she was blessed, and uh, she knew it was the long-awaited Messiah. Folks, God could have chose anyone as far as women. I mean, he, he, he could have chose someone else, but God chose her. And folks, I think of that when I think of salvation. God did not have to choose me, okay? He chose us. He handpicked us. He personally made us. We are not an accident, folks. Matter of fact, Jeremiah 1. Go to Jeremiah 1 with me if you would. Jeremiah 1. Jeremiah 1. 
Verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Folks, you just have to understand the sovereignty of God. Okay? God always was. He, I mean, to create something, you already have to exist. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. As you read down through Genesis in the last part of chapter 1, he made man, and then he made woman. You were not a mistake. You were not a mistake. I mean, as soon as, uh, you know, uh, the man and the woman were together, we know biologically how that takes place. And I am telling you, uh, that's when life began. And God knew your birth date even before you were born. Okay, and I know some people just, they have a hard time grasping that. But the key to all of this, the key to joy is faith. I said prayer, but I wanted to get to faith also. Faith, we believe that. We believe the Word of God. We believe that God can do anything. And it says here, before I formed you, in the womb I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. This is Jeremiah the prophet. I set you apart. And we know that Elizabeth was carrying John the Baptist. John the Baptist. And he was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. You think all that just happened by mistake? They just happened to be cousins and they happened? No, folks. God planned this even before the foundations of the world. And if you really think about it, it's even more amazing because when you finish the Old Testament, there were 400 years of silence. Just silence. Folks, I'm telling you, sometimes the heavens are silent. Even during those times, we need the joy of the Lord in our lives. I cannot tell you how important, I really can't, Christian music is to me. I listen to Christian music all the time. All the time. I listen to it in my truck. I've got CDs in my truck. I love the hymns. We're really going to get on the Christmas carols uh, this Sunday. I love to hear those. And folks, those, uh, you know, they, they soothe you. They, they speak to you. And, and that's what it's talking about. God sanctified him. He set him apart and ordained you to be the prophet of nations. So I'm telling you, Old Testament times, God sanctified Jeremiah from birth, from birth. And see, what man says is man says seeing is believing. That's what man says. That's, you say, well, I don't believe you unless I see it. If I don't see it, I don't believe it. But what God says and what faith says is believing is seeing. I've got to believe in order to see the, the magnificence of God. Folks, faith is the key. Uh, look at Psalm 139 with me. Psalm 139. Both babies were special. And, and this unborn baby leaped in the womb. Psalm 139. Psalm 139, verse 13. Psalm 139, 13 says, For you formed my inward parts, and you covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God knew that John the Baptist would be the forerunner of Jesus Christ. They met each other before they were even born. <laughs> I don't know. That, that, this, you know when, when I studied that this week, I just thought, Man, God's so amazing. God is so amazing. He knew what he was doing. Marvelous are your works that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes uh, saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book they were all written. Folks, you think about DNA and you think about the genetics of your, you know, your body and, and of your creation. God knows who you are. God created you just 
the way you need to be. And these two unborn babies, I'm t- telling you, they were special babies. They were sanctified. They were anointed even before their birth. So we see in our lives, folks, you know, be, be thankful for who you are. Okay, be content with who you are. God made you just the way he wanted you to be. And number three, not only the joy of the unborn baby, but the joy of Mary. The joy of Mary. Look back in our text. Luke 1. Luke 1. Well, let me finish verse 42. I got out ahead of myself. (laughs) Okay. And she spoke out in a loud voice in verse 42. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord shall come to me? What are we talking about, folks? We're talking about humility, okay? Humility, all right? Humility uh, is very important when it comes to joy in our lives. Folks, um, you know, we shouldn't have the thought of, hey, you know, look at what I've done or, you know, look what I do. Look what I've accomplished. Folks, it should never be that way, folks. God gives us everything, and every good and perfect gift comes from God. Verse 44, For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. Why do we leap? Think about sports. All right, what do they do when they, when they, when they score a touchdown? And you're in Lambeau Field. What do they do? They go jumping into the crowd. The Lambeau Leap, they call it. Why? They scored a touchdown. Okay? And folks, I am telling you, uh, you know, when good things happen in our lives, we should leap for joy. What are you so happy about? God answered a prayer. God answered a prayer. God came through. Folks, we need to testify of that in our own lives And then verse 45, blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told uh, of her. And again, we see uh, Old Testament prophecy, which I'm going to share with you in just a minute. So we see the joy of an unborn baby. And the last thing I want you to see is the joy of Mary. The joy of Mary. I think one of the neatest things to do is uh, when a husband and wife or trying to have a baby. And they run the test, and they're doing this test. And, uh, you know, I haven't seen many in person, but I'm telling you, after somebody tells you, hey, we're expecting, I mean the lady's face lights up. Okay? They are so excited, and there's so many stories where people have tried and tried and tried. And then all at once, God opens the womb. And I think this was the way it was uh, with Mary. Mary, you know, she wasn't even trying. And she was in an unusual situation. Nobody else on earth could tell her story. Why? Because she was the mother of Jesus. That is what blessings is. So the joy of Mary. Uh, Let's look at verse 46. And Mary said, uh, my soul magnifies the Lord. And this uh, is called the Magnificent. Also, it's a hymn or a song of praise. Uh, the first verse is basically uh, verse 46 through 49, uh, speaking of Mary herself. And then verse 50 through uh, 56 speaks of Israel. Okay? And let's read this song or this hymn of praise. The first thing she says is my soul magnifies the Lord. Folks, that's what we are supposed to be doing in our lives. We are supposed to be magnifying the Lord. It's not about us. It's not about what we have done. God, I am telling you, has blessed us. And she was feeling that joy uh, in her heart. And my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. And again, it has, uh, you know, the the personal touch to that. You know, God chose her. And it can even, you know, know, mean salvation also. All right? And it says, 
uh, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maid servant. And if you studied uh, Joseph and Mary, they were not very rich. Matter of fact, uh, there was every indication that they were poor. They didn't have a lot of things. But yet, you know, God wasn't looking for some rich lady that lived in some big house. All right? God knew Mary would be a wonderful mother and, and the mother of Jesus. And you look at your, her life sometimes. You know, she's always in the background. If you'll just read through the Gospels, she's in the background. You know, and I, I believe just praying for her son, uh, supporting her son. And the Bible even says pondered things in her heart. She knew Jesus was going to be extra special. And it says, uh, "Behold, for behold, hence all generations will call me blessed. And we remember uh, the angel says she was highly favored. Highly favored. Listen to me, ladies. You are highly favored. Favor. Don't let anybody tell you anything else. You have the blessings of God on your life. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. Mary was humbled uh, by being chosen as Jesus' mom. Uh, Mary was highly favored and God's mercy and grace was upon her. God was in control of this situation. And if you look at her life and you know, all that they went through. Uh, you know, even, you know, the gifts, you know, from the wise men. Folks, all those gifts were given to help support them. Okay, they were, they were, they did not have the money. They could probably not have lived, you know, well, or, you know, you know, if, if, if that hadn't happened and having to flee also, uh, God was with them the whole time. Then verse 50, and his mercy is on those who fear him. We start the second verse. From generation to generation. And you can go back and start at Genesis chapter 12 where God told Abram, hey, you need to get out of this land. You need to take your family. All people, all people are going to come from your seed. Look at verse uh, 51. Matter of fact, I noticed this as I was reading through there and you look at these. The word he has is used eight times. Eight times. He, capital he, is God, okay? God has done these things for us. He has shown strength with his arm, and he did that all through the Old Testament. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. All right, the proud. He, he, he loves the humble. Uh, verse 52, he has put down the mighty from their thrones. Folks, I am telling you, uh, you know, he is in control. All right, I understand we have presidents. I understand even in other cultures there's kings. But folks, there's only one king, and that's King Jesus. That's God himself. He is ruling. He is sovereign. He is in control of everything. God's got this. He has filled the hungry with good things. The rich, he has sent away empty he has helped his servant Israel in, uh, in remembrance of his mercy. The hand of God has been on Israel. And I am telling you, if, if people had any brains at all, they would not mess with Israel. It is God's country. It is God's chosen people. As he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, to his seed, forever forever. Verse 56, and Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her house. And uh, I was reading even historically uh, that the three months was until uh, Elizabeth had the child. So let's look at two scriptures as we close. The joy of Mary, Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah 9, go with me if you would to Isaiah 9. Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Folks, we know who this child was. That's a capital C. That was uh, God in human flesh. That is Jesus Christ our Lord. Unto us a son is given. 
and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Folks, we could stop right there. We could talk 30 or 40 more minutes just on Jesus' names. He is wonderful. He is the best counselor. He is God and mighty God. He is everlasting. And the, the other thing is the Prince of Peace. You know what true joy brings in your life? It brings peace. Peace. Silent Night is one of the most sung uh, Christmas carols that, was, that has ever been written. Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. Now look what it says. And of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Oh, folks, the joy that Mary had in her heart was knowing that she was carrying the Son of God. I'm telling you, ladies, that would, that would be incredible. That would be unbelievable. Her story, you know, uh, and I understand it's in the Bible, but the world would just say, you know, no way. There is no way. Last scripture I want to see is in Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verse 1. How does this apply to us today? This applies to us today. The reason Elizabeth had the joy was because of the birth of John the Baptist. The reason Mary had the joy was because of the birth of Jesus. And they were both blessed by God. And folks, here's why I say, even in the chaos of this world, even with the coronavirus going around, even with all the things, the division and you know all these things going in our life, we can have joy and we can have peace. Why? Because we are blessed. We are blessed. Psalm 103.1 Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. I love the song Emmanuel. God with us. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Folks, what we do so many times, we, we, we do not think the right way. We think of the negative things that go on in our life and we magnify the negatives. And when you really get down to it as a Christian, folks, I'm telling you, I understand cancer. I, I've been through, I understand losing a loved one. I've, been, I've lost both my parents. I understand all those things are trying times in our lives. But if we really think about it, we are blessed beyond measure. Forget not it. Who forgives our iniquities. Folks, we all need forgiveness. Who heals our diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. I'm telling you, you know, uh, a lot of people's lives, they're just train wrecks. And God forgives. He not only forgives, He forgets. He forgets who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. Loving kindness, unconditional love is God. Mercy is not giving us what we deserve. His grace is giving us what we don't deserve. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. That's what I like. Walked into my office tonight. There's a plate of candy sitting on my desk. You don't think that I don't want to enjoy and shout? <laughs> and I just told Lori, she just said, oh, Mike, here we go. I said, we'll talk about it in January, okay? <laughs> Good things so that your youth is renewed like eagles. Folks, even when we do not feel like we can go on, even when we are sometimes just give out, even sometimes when the world just 
beats us down and we just and here's what I learned not to say do not say this what else could happen because you know what you're saying to Satan you're just pointing yourself out and he will take advantage of that Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Folks, we should have Christmas joy 365 days of the year. But let's just try to have it for three weeks, okay? Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. God, your word is so encouraging. You do the impossible. Elizabeth was barren. Mary uh, you know, she was a virgin. It just made no sense to man. But God, it was your plan. And God, we want to stay in the middle of your plans. Your plans are right. Your plans are necessary. Your plans uh, are not our plans, says the word. So God, help us to just realize, hey, tomorrow's another day. Hey, we get to start over. Hey, if we'll confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. God, I pray that the joy of the Lord will be our strength. God, I pray that we will put Jesus first, put others second, and ourselves last. Lord, if we would just do that, this world would be a better world. We're Christians. We're the light of the world. This is an opportunity. Christmas time is an opportunity to show uh, the world who you are, to magnify the Lord Christ. So God, I pray that we would be about it. God, help us not to be Scrooges. Help us not to be uh, negative in, in our thoughts and in our words and in our actions. God, I pray that we would be positive, and God, I pray we would testify of your goodness. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.